Hi, my name is Don Mashik. I'm from Monticello, Minnesota. I'm a graduate of the University of Minnesota. I've been self-employed as a business owner for 24 years. I've been asked to prepare a three-minute testimony to Congress. Mine shall be somewhat different than most of that you have or will see. Having suffered the devastation of judicial corruption for almost 20 years, I have had time to distance myself and reflect on what has transpired. Others that are providing these three-minute testimonials are in various states of grief and suffering from legal abuse syndrome and offshoot of post-traumatic stress disorder. Others will be trying to explain to you their suffering and losses. They want their broken government fixed. Many of them will be asking you to make them whole and to address their concerns to restore their faith in their government. Having suffered the punishment and reprisal for 20 years, my unalienable natural law right to pursuit of happiness has been almost permanently and totally destroyed. In those 20 years, I have become resigned to my losses, but more reflective and proactive in seeking to prevent others from suffering similar fates at the hands of judicial corruption. <coughs> 20 years ago, various escalating threats were made to me in regard to me giving testimony about the wrongful repossession of vehicles from 150 to 250 in, uh, innocent Minnesota families. The Justice Department, elected officials, and judges acted to protect the, the cover, to cover up not only the original crime, but also the attempts at witness tampering. More specific and irrefutable evidence regarding this can be found in the body of, lawless, of my Lawless America interview and at the uh, Wells Fargo corruption address that you can see at the bottom of this document. The other um, stuff on here are cases that I'm involved with currently involving uh, unconstitutional reprisal and punishment that I'm suffering for simply exercising my First Amendment right to petition the government for redress of grievances. As a result of my experience, I determined not to get married nor have children. I did this because I refused to knowingly put loved ones in the way of harm of the harm that I was experiencing. I had hoped that in time the powers that be would forget me. However, that was not the case. With the advent of the internet in about 2004, I was able to find, share experiences, and formulate a strategy for judicial reform. In time, that strategy would become known as judicial TAR, TAR standing for transparency, accountability, and reform. From 2005 to present, myself and hundreds of other Minnesotans asked the Minnesota State House and Senate Judiciary Committees for a hearing to give evidence and testimony of corruption in the Minnesota courts. Next year will be the eighth year that both Republicans and Democrats have presented my, prevented myself and other, hundreds of other Minnesotans from exercising their First Amendment right to petition the government for redress of grievances without fear of punishment nor reprisal. A fun, this is a fundamental natural law right and a right uh, fundamental to the reasons that our country declared independence from England and is reflected in that same document. During this same period of time, an office manager and her subcontractor husband decided to quit their business relationship with me and my company. This occurred while I was out of the country on vacation. They embezzled money, stole real and intellectual property, and purposely damaged a vehicle before returning it. On three separate occasions after they indicated verbally and in writing that they had no personal or company property of mine, they returned personal and company property uh, to myself, to my sister, and to my attorney. They never returned their stolen personnel files containing their no compete agree agreements. They then tried to start their own same or similar business with the intellectual property they had stolen and when that failed, went to work for competitors in violation of their no-compete agreements. After I recovered from some health issues, I filed suit against them. For almost a year, they avoided service of process. And then suddenly, when they became aware their current address was known to me and that they were about to be unavoidably served process, the office manager made wild and colorful accusations to provide some kind of desperate defense. The courts used this litigation to punish me for being perceived, a perceived leader of Minnesota judicial tar and fiscal tar movements. 
They use this in litigation in an attempt to damage my credibility to others and before the Minnesota legislature. I paid more than $20,000 to my attorneys over two years and got no depositions, very little discovery, and then only at the last minute, no compelled discovery, no amended complaint, and further, though I did not realize it at the time, my attorneys also resisted me putting evidence on the record. One has to wonder openly if what my far former office managers had to say about me was true, why would they resist having her give a deposition and making all those allegations under oath? In essence, the court, the defense, and my own attorney engaged in obstruction of justice through simulated litigation and fact shaping. After the judge made the adverse rulings, the lawyer, Lee Wolfgram, admitted to me that he, the court, and the defense had conspired against me. He uttered words to the effect that we have reduced you to the appearance of a bumbling eccentric. For the appeal, mysteriously almost all, almost the identical large amounts of documents were missing from the return client file, which Lee Wolfgram returned. And they were almost identical to the uh, documents missing from the court record. For weeks, these documents could not be located. They were not located until after I went to the police department to file a police report. A few days later, I was told they were found in the judge's chambers. But by this time, it was after the deadline for appeal. The point being that unless the court and Lee Wolfgram communicated, how do you explain that the missing set of documents from both files were almost identical? And those were the pleadings I created pro se, but which my attorney insisted I should not have addressed by the court and entered on the record. And then I found out about the clandestine, unpublished Fabian v. Volkmer ruling, A10-1205, in which the Minnesota State District Appellate and Supreme Courts have ruled that Minnesota lawyers do not have to treat their clients ethically. Each attorney I retained represented that they would represent me to the best of their ability and with only my best interest being their basis for their representation. Clearly, none of them had any intention to do so. Clearly, they, defra clearly they defrauded me out of more than $20,000 with material misrepresentations. The primary judge in this manner has been uh, Sherburn County Judge Mary Yunker. For these many anniversaries of my 29th birthday, I've always taken pride in saying I've never taken any public assistance but student loans that I long ago paid off. But now that breaking point has been torn from me. My business of 24 years is now destroyed, my finances ruined, my house in foreclosure, and my health fading. So unlike others who may come before me and after me, I do not come before you to be made whole and live happily ever after. It's too late for that. I come to you on behalf of future generations of Americans. You have no idea the stress, the frustration, this maddening, maddening corruption inflicts on citizens and families. I am so happy that I made the decision not to get married and have children because I could not have bared to see the disappointment in their eyes every night. I could not have borne the worry of what the government would do for them, do to them if I attempted to right these great wrongs and injustices. Having lost everything, there is nothing but my life that you can take from me. And that would be a welcome relief from the torture I've been forced to endure. With no wife, no children, no family, no business, no home, and bad health, there is no further punishment nor reprisal you can reflect, inflict upon me for simply exercising my First Amendment right to petition the government for redress of grievances. That having been said, I will not grovel and wring my hands and beg you to take corrective action with regard to the country's judiciary. No, I shall demand it. The natural law right to due process is an unalienable right of all citizens. I shall not grovel for it, but rather expect it as a matter of natural law. I know who each of you really are, and I know what each of you really think of, we the people. 
The governing philosophy of the divine right of kings was supposed to have ended with the enlightenment and the delineation of our unalienable natural law rights. Instead, we find it alive, albeit disguised, in our own government. Our elected officials and judges are making decisions based on whim and acceptance of consideration instead of the best interests of we the people and the rule of law, respectively. As the Founding Fathers did with King George, I and others have attempted to petition the government for redress of grievances in, hum in the humblest of terms. And I have been rewarded with nothing but repeated injury and insult. We have seen in recent months in the Middle East what happens to tyrants when the people tire of their trespasses. Hussein, Mubar, Gaddafi suffered fates they could never have dreamed possible. If you choose not to make the reforms the judicial tire movement has rightfully demand, demanded, do not bother to come to me to be the voice of reason when others less patient choose to achieve by violence that what you have received, refused to consent to when made by peaceful, respectful requests and petitions by we the people. The right to revolt is a natural law right memorialized in the Declaration of Independence. And I quote the Declaration of Independence. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed, that whenever any Whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or abolish it and to institute new government, laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. JFK said, those who make peaceful revolution impossible make violent revolution inevitable. As for myself, I would rather die on my feet than live on my knees groveling for handouts from tyrants. You have been petitioned, apprised, and warned. It's my expectation that you immediately restore to all citizens their natural law right to due process. That due process being rendered pursuant to the bona fide rule of law applied properly to the freely admitted, non-machinated, relevant facts and evidence. Those were my thoughts.